Maybe I could, you know, make a little extra money. <laughs> uh, how much do you work for? Hi, this is Paul Lineweaver here with Nancy Pritchard, world-class rock climber, outdoor journalist. Tucson, Arizona, the ASCF National Climbing Competition. Rocks and ropes. Nancy, what can we expect from the competition? Uh, the stakes are high for the 20 women, 30 men who will be competing for only five positions on the U.S. National Climbing Team. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute, Nancy. We're inside. Where's the dirt? Where's the rocks? Where's the dust, the bugs? What Paul, kind of climbing is this? get real. Welcome to the 90s. This is indoor climbing. This is sport climbing. The art in climbing is not getting to the top, but how you get there. What is cool are the moves you make, how rad they are, how difficult they are to achieve. The problem is protection. First, no one used protection. But that didn't. Next, climbers tried wedging knots to stop the fall. It's a little sketchy. They also tried hammering things into the rocks, but that damaged the rock. Then came clean climbing. Nuts, mechanical camming devices, but to climb the smooth faces, they needed bolts. Solid, bomb-proof bolts. So many bolts that you never had to fall very far, which meant climbers could make harder routes safely. Cool moves, rad climbs. Nobody, nobody gets hurt. This is sport climbing. With indoor sport climbing, certified route setters like Steve Schneider can create climbs of any difficulty, so anyone can climb in a safe, controlled environment. By reducing the risks, sport climbing has allowed climbers to achieve a higher level of performance and at indoor gyms test their strength and skills in competitions like this. So we have some of the top great climbers. We have Bobby Benson with the Bobby, women. Bobby Benson, third in the country. Bobby is going to be very strong. We also have Gia Phipps, who is fifth ranked in the United States. She is very strong. She's been traveling, living in Europe. She made quite a lot of money being a stunt woman for cliffhanger. 400 foot climbing falls, I think, tend to pay a lot of money. Suzanne Paulson, she's rated seventh in the United States. She's a little bit older, mid-30s. More mature. More mature, she has a PhD in chemistry. Also, we have the, currently the number one ranked men competitor, Scott Franklin. Bad boy of climbing, John McEnroe. Former Patrick. bad boy of climbing. Now he's really matured. He's climbing very smooth, very strong climber. Very experienced competitor. Also, we have Timmy Fairfield, who's a young guy from Santa Fe, He's New Mexico. He's a local favorite. The crowd local will go favorite. Wild. People love Timmy. He's very smooth. He should be also one to watch. John Cronin. The man with the tattoos. The man with the tattoos. New Yorker. Very tough from the streets. He knows how to climb. He's, He's aggressive. Got the, aggressive, the long reach. Tomorrow, they'll have a chance to show their color. The idea is for the climber to start from the ground and move to the final belay point without ever waiting the rope. When we score these climbers, what you'll do is if they touch the hold, they'll get a point value for a touch. If they grab the hold and actually stabilize on it, they'll get a different value. If they grab the hold and are able to try to use it for advancement farther up the wall or along a traverse, then we'll give them even a higher value for that. The climber who gets the highest along the holds or along the axis of the route will get the higher position. Hold tight. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the ASCF climbing competition in Tucson, Arizona. The quarterfinal, the competition begins. The over 30 men will be narrowed down to the 16 positions in the semi. The 20 women down to 10. This is where it shows who's been training and who's been slacking off. For more on what it takes, let's go to Nancy. This type of competition requires tremendous power. Tony Inero is a master at power training. Let's check out how he does it. Here it is, portable, attached to the RV. <laughs> Climbing is one of those really weird sports that uh, takes everything. In climbing, you have to use your arms, your legs, you have to have maximum power, and you have to endure high levels of power. It's really hard to train for. You don't just go and train for a few weeks and then go and crank it. You're going to blow your fingers out. Pop. No, no more tendons. I know you're eating ice cream beforehand, but I mean, what do you really eat? Mm. <laughs> Start easy, 
work up and allow a lot of time to build. Back at the quarterfinals, the climbing continues. At each round of the competition, the routes become more difficult. Each climber has five minutes to make their attempt. Well, we're wrapping up the quarterfinals. A few surprises. I think the big surprise was the difficulty of the women's route. None of the women flashed both Flash? Routes. I didn't see any nudity. <laughs> it's not that type of flashing. Flashing's getting from the bottom to the top without any falls. Bobby Bensman almost did it. She's a front runner. She fell just after a very, very difficult clip. Um, Suzanne Paulson looked very strong. Gia Phipps was a smooth assault. I think it's going to be an exciting semifinals. In the men's, there were a few surprises. 15 out of the 16 climbers advancing to the semifinals flashed both the routes. Scott Franklin looked very strong as usual. John Cronin flashed the route with about a minute and a half to spare. And then the excitement came when Jason Campbell clipped the last bolt with eight tenths of a second to go. That was wild. The crowd went wild. The crowd went wild. So did I. Tony Anero, he fell during the qualifying Bit round. of a bad luck. He slipped off the first move before even the first clip. He's out of the competition. So what's the plastic bag situation? Well, behind door number three, we have Steve Schneider setting up the route for tomorrow. It's uh, basically shrouded in secrecy. The climbers aren't allowed to preview the routes. It's an on-site ascent. Nobody sees what's going on. Top secret. Top secret. <laughs> Little trickery and deception here. <laughs> Perfect result for a final, one male on the top of the route, one female on the top of the route. But the rest of the people kind of sliming off down the line. If they're falling because they slipped, then they might come up to me and go, dude, why'd you use that little tiny hold? Or, dude, that finger, man, it hurts me. I'm gonna bubble you. Heather's like a root tester, forerunner. Dangerous. They're going to go up, straight up. I might take a move that I find on an actual rock route that's elegant and try and duplicate it in the gym. Pretty steep up there, so you got to give them some decent holds to hold on to. We were up to 3 a.m. last night setting these routes, and we had a lot of fun with it. Now we just get to sit back and watch our work unfold. Speed climbing, the event within the event. What's it all about, Nancy? It's fast, it's furious, Paul. You tie into the rope, race to the top, slap the bell, drop to the ground, switch routes, and do it all over again. Let's check it out. A lot of this is a lot like swimming. You're just sweeping the holds to the ground. But I have everything to lose and almost nothing to win in speed in the States because I've never lost. When someone knocks me off, it's going to be like tremendous pressure. You know, 100 bucks to you guys might not seem much, but to a climber, it gets me another couple weeks of gas money. Hang around. We'll be right back. Climbers are placed in what's called an isolation area before they actually start climbing. The reason for this is to limit contact with any individuals who might witness any of the course setting, witness anybody climbing in the route, or even look at the route. We'll bring them all out, and we'll give them five or six minutes for that preview. Then they must return to isolation. So a lot of times, they could be in isolation for 45 minutes, or they could be in isolation for four hours. Go here and go up. 
Before climbing, the competitors are allowed to see the route once, and they mentally attack the course, anticipating their sequence of moves on the wall. The men climb one route, the women another. Steve Hong gives it a go. Steve Hong, the interesting thing about this climber is not only is he one of the top ten in the country, but he's also a physician. He's actually my doctor. Steve, trying to send the final crux, can't quite pull it. It's as simple as that. This is lead climbing. This is how the competitors will move up the route. They tie into a rope with the belayer at the other end. They look up ahead of them for a quick draw. Once they get to that draw, they can clip the rope. Got the clip, Paul. You're on belay, Nancy. In case Nancy falls, the combination of my body weight and the friction created by the belay device will stop the climber from falling. The key to safety in climbing is the belay and the belayer. You gotta pay attention. Jason Campbell and Bobby Bensman battling up to the top of their respective routes. Jason goes for the touch of a hold at the second crux, hoping that will be enough to send him into the finals. Bobby cruises the route, setting the pace for the women. I am working to be able to relax, to be able to be a really good competitor, to be able to climb indoors the way I climb outdoors. Homegirl Bobby Benzman snaps the final clip and locks her spot in the finals. One of the holds that I thought was going to be solid was less solid. I hit the pocket and I was solid on it, but then I didn't, I didn't have my get my foot up high enough to reach up. What's it like to fall? Proper place. To <laughs> Can be scary can be frightening. But usually, if it's just a little controlled fall and you're expecting it, it's not that bad. John Cronin, well over six feet tall, has a distinct advantage. He can reach past holds that other competitors have to grapple with. What went through your mind when you realized you were out of there and you still hadn't clipped the chain? I knew I was in because in ISO you can hear how high everyone got and I, I knew I didn't have to really push it that hard. Katie Johnson moves up the route with confidence. No problem. She's the second woman to flash the route. Timmy Fairfield visualizes his moves mentally. Obviously feeling good, Timmy takes time to savor the moment, chalking up before grabbing the final jug. He's the first man to flash the roof. Scott Franklin is the favorite and Timmy's main competition. He's having trouble with his rope. He can't quite make the clip. This is his chance to call a technical. It appears that he's decided to keep climbing and repositions for the clip. He's off the wall. The favorite didn't get very high, and he's not going to make the finals. He is upset. They're setting the final course. It's top secret. You watch the commercial. I'm going to go check it out. Oh, you're back. The course they're setting for the finals is a nightmare. Let's go check out the victims. Bobby Benzman, she's fit, she's honed, she's the local favorite, she's going to win. Gia Phipps, Suzanne Paulson, very strong competitors, had a hard time in the semifinals. They didn't look solid, they didn't look strong, they didn't flash the route. A couple gals, Katie Johnston, uh, Mindy Shulak, they flashed the route. Kind of unknown girls. I think they're going to do very well in the final.
Well, with Scott Franklin out of the picture, the national favorite, I think that we may have a real open ball game going for us. We have John Cronin, who's really hungry for a national title. He has yet to win one. He looked very strong in the semifinals. Timmy Fairfield gave a tremendous performance in the semis. Hans Flooring. Very experienced competitor. Very experienced well. competitor. We've got some very strong men. I think it's going to be fantastic. Suzanne Paulson really needs to make a comeback on this climb, Paul. In the semifinal round, she fell early. She barely made it into the finals. Well, it's kind of tough, too, being the first competitor to go in the women's event. you got to sit there and watch and sweat it out while all the other people come afterwards. She's really moving slow. She's got to be tenuous. Well, look at how she's using Look at that. She's making the last clip. No, she's not quite the last clip. One more. Oh, she's oh. having problems there, Paul. She's out. Good performance, though. This is Seth Johnson, Paul, from the Canadian national team. He's done very, very well in the U.S. competitions in the last two years. He's a young fellow, but he seems to be a very solid competitor. He's looking real strong. Now he's getting into bigger holds. Seth's known for powerful oh. moves. This is Mindy Shulak. She climbed extremely well in the semifinals, Paul. She is incredibly fluid. Mindy is climbing with incredible grace and strength. Mindy just passed Suzanne Paulson's high point. Suzanne is now at least in both oh. third place. Hollywood Hans. You know, Hans is a real veteran competitor. He's kind of known for his speed climbing, former world champion speed climber. Goes to the rock master every year as a speed climber. But in this difficulty, talking to him last night, he was psyched. He was saying, I'm going to do really well in the final. Well, Hans is a... Um, unapologetic self-promoter. He doesn't mind promoting himself, saying, I'm the good, I'm the best. He reminds me a little bit of Muhammad Ali. Uh, never knew Hans is going for the hold that Seth had. Hans is past Seth's position on the wall. It looks like he's our current leader. Oh, he's off the wall now. He's got to be happy, though. He made it a little higher than Seth. Right now, Hans is the man to beat. It's a really hard, smooth hold, and I, I stuck it perfect. It's, I know, good accuracy, and I just didn't have the guns to pull down on it. We have Gia Phipps on the route. She's starting to traverse. She's moving a little quicker than the other gal. She's one of the climbers that had, had a difficulty in the semifinal route. I'm afraid that might have thrown off her confidence as well as the controversy with her fiance, Scott Franklin. He's the man, so it's super disappointing. But I gotta know, I gotta take care of myself too. So we'll just see what happens. You never know. That's the thing that's great about competitions. It's just a mystery. She's coming into the upper head wall. Look at her fly through she those moves. Doing, maybe this route is a little easier. Here we have. The first two competitors almost getting to the very top of the route. Paul, she is oh, oh she's, she's out of there. Down. Back to rocks and ropes after this. With any major sporting event, you have sponsors bringing you action. The Tucson Psychiatric Institute. I knew these guys were crazy. Jordy Salas, he's a Spaniard. This guy has some serious guns. You know, in Europe, climbing is a much more popular sport. It's big, draws thousands of people to the World Cup competitions. Here in the U.S., the, the U.S. climbers are trying to kind of catch up with the Europeans. Let's see how Jordy does here. Jordy's looking good. through that traverse. He's getting up high into the clip. He's made the upper clip. A lot of the guys had trouble. Looks like he's having a little difficulty in oh, overhanging Just wall. about where Seth was, that same telephone hold they're trying to go for. This is Katie Johnson from Salt Lake City, Utah. Katie is a new uh, climber to the sport. She's only been climbing three or four years. I'm amazed at how well she's doing today. She is a true success story. I thought she was an underdog, but perhaps that she'd that have a chance. Position. This is a 120 degree wall where she's holding her foot above her head. Katie's having some difficulty. Oh, she's made the crossover move. She's moving good again. 
Paul, this is pretty darn exciting. Look at that stem. So you've got to just make the clip. And the root isn't complete until you clip all the bolts. You can have the final holes that she saw. I did a sequence that was actually backwards than how it was supposed to be done. It didn't give me enough reach to make the last clip. John Cronin, you take one look at him and he certainly is a character. Boy, he is a big boy. Look at the stretch he has. He just fired through the traverse moves. John Cronin primarily learned to climb the indoor walls. Look at this step through move that John does. This is unbelievable. Look how John is. Look at this. He is so smooth and so strong. He's got the phone. He's got He's it. He's got the handhold. Now he is definitely the highest competitor. This Unbelievable. Is, this is the move that Stymie... Look at He's locked off. He's yeah. switching hands. He's in He's control. moving higher along this wall. He's a little Stymie, though. He can't get the button. He's oh. in power. I was gassed. I was pumped. I wasn't going much further than I did. And Jason Campbell. He's from South Lake Tahoe. I'm California boy. He's good at these traverses. You can see the control, the concentration. Oh, he reached up easily, grabbed the phone hole. Oh, you can tell he's a little nervous now. He's dying. Oh. Well, this is Bobby's big opportunity to move higher up. And she really can gain some valuable points for this for making that World Cup team. And I think she's looking very strong right now. She's cruising the traverse. She's climbing stronger than I've ever seen her. I think this last year in Waco, Texas training has just done a world of good for her climbing. Bobby is the last female competitor. If she flashes, she wins. You can bet Katie Johnson is watching nervously. Katie is the current leader. It looks like she's standing on a sidewalk at this point. It's overhanging 120 degrees, but you couldn't tell by the way she's climbing. I doubt she's even breathing heavy. Oh, look at that footwork. Switching to the last That's hold. Nice. She's got the final bucket. She's set up, and she's got the clip. She's got the clip. Gotta be happy with that. Look at her. She's showing her emotion. She really did a great job. <laughs> For the preview, I thought it was going to be really hard. In fact, I was surprised that the course did not challenge me at all. Here we are with Timmy Fairfield from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Real popular kid. Everybody likes Timmy. He's been competing well. Did first in the Phoenix bouldering contest last week. If any man's going to flash this route, Paul, it's Timmy. Starting to set up now for the phone hold. This has been a hard move for most of the competitors. Oh, oh he's oh. off the phone. John Cronin just moved into first place. This will be his first national win. It's all over. Grace, talent, power. It was fantastic, Paul. The men's event, a devious route, a long traverse. Half the competitors piled before he even made the third place. It was real disappointing for some all-time favorites. First place, New York boy John Cronin climbed his way to the top. Jason Campbell, climbing by the seat of his pants, brings home second place check. He's got to be happy with that. And Hans Flooring, Walsh is in the third place. But the women's? Women's oh. Bobby Benzman, of course. She wins again and again and again. The real struggle was for second and third place. Right. Katie Johnson had the final jug, going for the last clip. Couldn't hang on. It Kyle's was so there. close. Third place, Mindy Shulak from out of nowhere. Dances, waltzes, climbs to the top. She did a great job. It was an excellent competition. I was really happy to be here. Tucson, sunshine, indoor rock climbing. What more could you ask for? I'm Paul Weaver. Nancy Pritchard. Keep your knots tight. And hold on.